Go if you would to Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians chapter number 6 in the New Testament. And I, the first point that I want to address, I think is what most people uh, think of first when we think about honoring my father and mother. It would be the aspect of obedience, of obeying your father and your mother. And when we look at this point, I kind of have like four sub points, but we're going to be focusing on obedience for a moment. I'll read for you in Deuteronomy, it reiterates this commandment. It says, Honor thy father and thy mother, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it may go well with thee, and the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So according to the Bible, God not only commands you to do this, but he says, if you do, I'll prolong your days. You'll live a longer life if you obey your parents. Look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children... Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. You say, hey, I'm a young man. I'm a teenager. I'm a young boy. Well, if you want to live a long life, God says it's based on you obeying your parents. And not just one of them, not the one you like, both of them. Your father and your mother. Look at verse 2. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. God keeps re-emphasizing the fact that if you want to live a long life, you're going to obey your parents. People who obey their parents seem to live longer lives. Why? Because God promises it. Because God tells us that he'll prolong our lives. Look at verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Now, in order for a child to obey their parents, let me give you a hint, their parents have to instruct them. Their father has to be around. How can you obey your father when your father isn't even present in your life? So if you want your children to live long lives, you have to be there to instruct them, to guide them, to teach them, to train them, give them wisdom that they may live by. Now go if you would to Proverbs chapter number 30. And we'll spend a lot of our time in the book of Proverbs this morning. But it's because the book of Proverbs is written to children. It's, it's constantly saying, my son, my children, my son, over and over and over. And we constantly see a father instructing a son, giving wisdom unto a son. And this is such an important aspect of the Christian life. That fathers teach their children. And most importantly, that children will obey their parents. They'll actually take the advice of their parents and do it. Receive it. This is the picture of how God wants to deal with us, how we're supposed to obey God's commandments. I'll read for you from Romans chapter 13. The Bible says in verse 1, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. You say, why should I obey my parents? Because God said so. Amen. Not because of what your parents think. Not because of what the government thinks. Not because of what man thinks. God says that children obey your parents. For this is right. God is the one that ordained it. And when you resist your parents, you're not just resisting your parents. You're resisting God. God is the one that says obey your parents. And if you fear God, you will feel, fear your parents. Fear your mother, fear your father. Look at Proverbs 30, verse 15. The horse leech hath two daughters, crying, Give, give! There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, four things say not, it is enough. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out and the young eagles shall eat it. The Bible's giving us a couple different things where this attitude, this spirit, this thing that we observe in the world today, it's never satisfied. It's implacable. It's saying what? Fire just wants to keep burning. As long as it's got room to burn, it's going to keep burning. The grave, guess what? Everyone dies. And it's never going to be satisfied. People are going to continue dying. And we see a rebellious spirit in a child is never enough. They're going to continue being more rebellious, more mocking, more arrogant, more prideful. 
You see, it's never enough. They just want to keep mocking their parents and disobeying their parents. You got to squash out the rebellion in your child. Yep. Go, if you would, to Deuteronomy 21. It's a disease. And you know what? Teenagers today have this disease. It's bred in every teenager. They just think they are smarter than their parents. Every teenager. Every teenager thinks they know more than their parents. And if you think you know more than your parents, you're a fool. You're not wise. Your parents know more than you, period. I don't care what you think. Oh, my dad's not that smart. My dad doesn't know what's going on. He didn't have Facebook back in the day, and he didn't have YouTube, and he doesn't know how to use the computer. Look, your dad knows 10,000 things more than you. You need to hearken to the instruction of your parents. Your parents know better. Your parents love you. Your parents are not giving you bad advice because they don't like you just to ruin your life. No, they're doing it because they've been there, done that. There's no new thing under the sun. It might not have been called Facebook back in the day, but guess what? There was still gossip when they were, they were still dating. There was still enemies and friends and trolls. They all still existed. It was just different ways. And look, they've been there, done that. They were foolish. They've learned. They're wise. Listen to your parents. But you know, the child that doesn't, this is how God feels about it. Look at verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chast chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, this, is our, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. You know how you could squash rebellion in the public school today? Take the rebellious one out and stone him. I bet they'd shape him up pretty quick. I bet they'd figure out, maybe I should hearken under the authorities in my life. And we see, unfortunately, our society is cont continually destroying itself because of all of these rebellious, arrogant, prideful teenage jerks that just don't want to hearken to their parents. You know what? God said they should be put to death. The guy that's the lazy gamer. I don't want to get a job. I just want to play video games all day and drink alcohol with my buddies. That guy should be put to death. You know what? As a young man, you should be able to work and you should work hard and you should be sober. And the man that's not going to do that, God says, well, I think you're worthy of death. That's pretty serious. Now, obviously, in the society we live in today, this would never happen, right? America, this isn't happening. You can't take your child up to the government and say, look, this guy won't listen to us, hearken to us. But here's the thing. When man fails to execute God's judgment, do you think God's just going to let that go? God will repay. When man fails to put someone to death, God will take care of it. And if you're a stubborn and rebellious child, you better be careful every single step you take. God, what was the promise if you did honor your father and mother? Your days would be prolonged. Well, guess what? There's a caveat to that. What happens if you don't? What happens if you're rebellious? What happens when you're stubborn? The opposite is just as true.